Warning! Tube amplifiers have lethal voltages inside them. Please do not attempt to build, test, or repair these without understanding and following all safety protocols. Hey y'all! Well, we're back for 6P1 round 2. This is a little Noob Sound amp that I bought off Amazon. This was one of my first little two projects was working on this guy after I bought it trying to make it sound better and kind of ran up against a roadblock didn't really see a path forward so we just kind of stopped with doing some mods to how the front end was wired going from this floating cast code to a fixed bias cast code that everyone that's done it said wow it sounds so much better and I have to agree that this floating cast code is more of a design that's used in guitar amplifiers and when you use it in a hi-fi gear, it just creates distortion. And I mean, in a guitar amp, distortion's cool. And, you know, you get some funky, grungy sound or whatever that, you know, they play around with all that stuff. Where in a hi-fi amp, you don't want that. You don't want to transform your clean CD thing to a grungy sound. That's for guitar amps. So anyway, go into that fixed bias cast code which really cleaned up this amp, ended up using it on my 300B amp that I built as well. Just really works well. But the roadblock that I feel like that this amp has is this power transformer. First of all, it's 110 volts, which we covered in the earlier video. That creates the heaters overheating and voltage being too high on them, which shortens the tube life. You end up having to run a bucking transformer with this thing which you have to spend money doing that or buying one of those, you know, $60 APC boxes to drop the voltage. And for that money, you could probably buy a nice Hammond transformer that would work at 120 to 125 volt like we have currently and provide the current that we need without overheating. And I was scared to really bias these output tubes any hotter than they are, given that the transformer already runs pretty hot and biasing these tubes hotter trying to see if that gets better sound or more power would create an overheating problem with this transformer so i just kind of stopped there so i feel like the next step in evolving on this amp mod is to find a replacement for this power transformer and I highly doubt I'm going to be able to find a lay down one like this that's this size that'll bolt in this amp. And I'm probably going to try to find a Hammond that's the right voltage and the milliamp rating that we need to mount vertically and then turn it 90 degrees to the output transformers and it should work fine. May have to add a little piece of sheet metal to the top of the amp to then bolt that down too or you know maybe just a PC board, like a copper clad board, would probably be sturdy enough to mount the transformer to. And so that's the path I'm going to go down. I'm going to spend some time over the next couple of days doing some research on finding a better power transformer. So mounting this power transformer vertically is probably going to give us a little room here for larger output transformers as well. And I'm trying to get a feel for what people might be willing to spend on upgrading this amp. And at some point you have to say, well, it's a $250 amp, but if we can take it to the next level where this thing actually sounds better than a Rysong A12 by replacing the power transformer and the output transformer and doing some magic with the wiring, you could end up with less money than you would like putting this thing in the trash or trying to sell it for $100 and then spending $500 on another amp that you then have to spend another $100 or $200 on, you know, modifying and tube rolling on to get it where it sounds good. And so, who knows? These little output transformers might work fine, but in my experience with my 6BM8 amp, which is only a few watts, and it's got transformers that are actually a little bigger than this, that they struggle to really get a decent bass response. And so, kind of looking for some feedback. Again, 
you 6P1 owners, put something in the comments about, yes, I'd be willing to spend $250 or $300 on modding this amp on parts because that's what it may end up being if we get like some 15 watt output transformers and a new power transformer and rewire the guts of this thing. And that may be the path I go down and then you can decide for yourself whether you want to replace the output transformers or not. This guy's going in the trash. And then this will be a legit 120 volt amplifier. You don't need a bucket transformer anymore. And then move forward. I guess the other question is, how much are we going to change of this design that could impact the sound signature? Because one of the things that affects how it sounds is, are you in triode mode? Are you in pentode mode? Or if we replace these output transformers, we could actually go to ultralinear mode. And ultralinear mode is probably going to have almost twice the power that triode mode is going to have. But triode mode has got its own sound. And we might be able to tune that back in playing with some feedback or some shade feedback or some global negative feedback, something like that. But I'm not sure it'll ever sound like this triode strap amp does. And so should I leave it as a parallel triode amp? Or should we go ahead and get some ultralinear wound output transformers and really see what this thing can put out as a single ended amp? And then the last question is, with this tube complement, this could be turned into a push-pull amp. We got two output tubes and two 6S and 7s, and I'm pretty sure there's a way to convert that into a push-pull amp. And again, if we're going to be replacing the output transformers, we could buy some small push-pull output transformers and turn this into a push-pull amp that we might be able to get 12 watts out of it instead of the six. We could probably double the power of this thing. And so is that what we should do? Which would totally change what this little amp sounds like, but it would also allow it to be used for things that as a single ended amp it can't be used for. And so that might be a fun thing to try to turn this little thing into a beast and get 12 watts out of it as a push pull. So. Those are all of our kind of options. You know, I'm kind of still up in the air. This is a no-brainer. The power transformer's got to go. And so I'm going to work on that. But these other things, I'm going to kind of look at the comments, and I may even put a poll on the community page. What do you want to see the 6P1 turned into? And so that's kind of where we're at with this project. And I think this is going to be a fun one. I'm actually kind of thinking a push-pull might be fun. So if you're enjoying this content, you're enjoying my channel, please subscribe. Please consider joining my Patreon or a donation at my website to help fund doing these projects. And until the next video, have a great day. Bye.